My name is Patrick Booth. Uh, I'm the president of CCB Technology. Um, so grateful and thankful that all of you are here today uh, to be part of the Tech Showcase. Um, there's a lot of sessions to attend, as you know. Um, so feel free. Uh, if you're in the wrong session, it's okay. You can get up now and leave, and I understand completely, all right? But this session is on personal lessons on change, uh, striving for a culture of commitment and performance. Um, the reason why uh, I chose this topic is it's very personal to my heart. Um, CCB uh, has been around for 25 years, uh, but we have gone through so many changes over the last 25 years that it, it's almost unbelievable to look at who we are today and remember who we were 25 years ago. But we do remember that because, again, um, it's through the changes that you look back at yourself and you think, wow, this is how we've grown and where are we going as an organization? So to introduce myself a little bit more, because some of you might know me and some of you might not, um, I'll tell you a little bit about who I am. So uh, this is an uh, opportunity to see a picture of my family. Uh, so I, I have a wife, Lori, uh, and three kids. Um, we're at the birthday season. I don't know if any of you have the birthday season. I do. Three birthdays at the exact same time. Um, so I have my two sons. Um, the youngest is Landon, who's in my arms. He just turned one on Saturday. And uh, last year at the showcase, he actually came. He was only a couple days old, and I forgot my cell phone. And so my wife was kind enough to bring the, the, the three kids and the newborn. He was the hit. Um, and then my other son is Jackson, who just turned six a week before Landon. And my daughter is about to turn 10 on May 10th. So her, she keeps reminding me, you do know dad is my golden birthday, right? And I'm like, yes, how do I do? She's like, how about a puppy? Not this year, all right? I know it's your golden birthday. We can celebrate it down the road. All right, so there's that. And, and my wife, we've been married uh, now uh, going on 15 years. Pretty exciting. All right, where did I go to school? And who do I support when I'm... Uh, in my football season, college sports, uh, Tennessee, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. So you might know a quarterback that just retired from the NFL, Mr. Peyton Manning. Uh, I was there when he played. I got him to sign tons of autographs for everyone but me. So um, never got one for myself, but my dad has a football uh, saying, Happy 50th birthday, Chris. And it was right after Peyton got done with one of his practices, and he has his hand on the white ball with his fingerprints. So that's really cool. I thought it was cool. I think my dad has it underneath his bed. So, all right, um, but maybe you can buy it from him for five bucks. He'll give it to you. All right, so anyways, but Peyton Manning, uh, Gold Balls, Rocky Top. All right, here's my parents. Uh, if you see them, they're at work in the showcase. Uh, my dad is actually right here. I didn't see him until just now. Hey, Colonel. So there he is, um, along with my mom. She's at registration. She might have checked you in today, um, but please, uh, um, Obviously, uh, it's an honor and privilege to be part of a family business. My parents started CCB 25 years ago, which you'll get a chance to see some pictures of how we started in the basement of our house and who we are today. So um, I love my parents, Chris and Patty Booth, so make sure you get a chance to meet them if you see them walking by. Great people. Um, okay, so why do we change, right? Why do we change in our personal lives? Why do we change in our business lives? Why do we change as organizations, right? Well, I don't know, because change can be good, right? How many of you remember the original phone that we used to have in our home, right? I remember mine. Um, my parents had a red phone that uh, I thought was so cool. You know, I thought it was the Bat phone from back in the day with Batman. Um, and then the iPhone comes out. And then, you know, all the new technology that we have. Um, I used to have a Windows phone. I think I was the only person that had a Windows phone. But I did have a Windows phone. And it was pretty cool technology with the tiles. Um, and now I'm back to Apple, all right? Everyone has different features and benefits, but the reality is this. Change happens. Whether it's in your personal life, whether you're using a phone at home that you're tied to, or in your business, um, or you have that, that smartphone that allows you to do business while wherever you're at, checking your email, you know, sending documents to each other, um, being able to uh, have apps, you know, doing your own business maybe with apps. So I just think change is what happens when we know growth is happening as well. It also helps us perform better. I thought this is a, a good example. We all know the light bulbs. We all use light bulbs in our homes or in our businesses. This is kind of a, just a quick look at the formation of where we are today in, in, the, in the light industry. And that's not something I have experience in, but I, I can tell you as an end user I do. And, uh, and I tr it's hard to keep up with all the differences, but I can tell you it, it always gets better, right? Um, here's another one of technology. 
the, the Apple II back in 1977, uh, along with the, the Apple computer today. Um, such a difference. Why? Productivity, quality, that's what we're always striving for. But isn't that what we want in our personal lives and in our businesses too? Well, that's why CCB in my personal life, I try to change. I'm not saying I change as fast as my wife would like me to change, but I'm working at it. Each year, I'm working at it, and I'm getting there. And I tell my kids, be patient with me. I'm getting there, all right? Oh, we just lost it. Is that me? All right. So in order to change, the first thing you need to do is you need to be able to recognize change is needed, right? That's the first step, okay? So what happened to me? How did CCB change, right? And where do I look at the defining moment? Well, back in 2010, I was attending Microsoft's Worldwide Conference with my dad. Um, we always went together. And um, during the session, it was one of the keynotes, Steve Ballmer at the time, CEO. You guys might now know him as the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. He's a passionate individual. Well, he's on stage talking about the cloud. And Ballmer's like, and you know what? You're either with us or you're not. Get off the track. And I'm looking at this, and my eyes are wide open, like, and everyone's clapping. I'm like, why are you guys clapping? He just told us we're either with them or he's running us over, you know? And that's when I realized, I told my dad, I said, we got to come up with a plan. We got to go, we got to think about the cloud. We got to think and find a way to put it in our industry, into our business, right? Or we're not going to have customers anymore. So that was the defining moment. It wasn't necessarily one I came to on my own. <laughs> Steve Ballmer got me there real quick. But what does it mean to go to the cloud? So I had to think about that. I had to think about, you know, what does this journey look like? You know, we've never done the cloud before. We had never done services before, okay? We had been a company, which I will talk about later in the presentation, but to kind of get there right now, we always have been a product of supplying, right? So you needed a computer, we got it for you. You need a licensing for a Microsoft Office, we got it for you. Um, we never had thought about services, but the cloud was all about services because Microsoft ran the product and does run the product. <clears throat> so I thought, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna climb this mountain because that's exactly what it felt like to me. The cloud, what happens when we get there? Are we gonna get there? I had doubt, I had questions, um, but we said, you know what? We at least have to go for it. So again, recognizing the change was so critical. Um, and I had that moment, so I said, you know what, if we can get to the top, what's it going to look like? Well, the first thing we need to do is think about how do we introduce ourselves into new markets, right, with the, with the change in the cloud. And we realized not everyone maybe is going to necessarily want this or that we've been working with, so we needed to reintroduce ourselves. So we started looking at, being that we're based in Racine, Wisconsin, not too far from here, uh, we thought, what about the Milwaukee area, which is why we're here, uh, Chicago. Um, everything in between, over to Madison. Um, we've always been based in Wisconsin, but our focus has always been national, um, and we thought, why don't we take about the cloud and think about services being local, um, besides just also taking it national, but let's, let's really dive into our own backyard. So that was a whole new strategy, one that even my dad and I, being that he started the company, he always wanted to be national, um, he had good, re good reasons of concern. Patrick, why are we going local, just local? Shouldn't we just think national? That's how we've always been. And I was like, you know what? We're climbing a mountain, and you have to start at the base of the mountain. You don't get to the top instantly. So we thought, why not start in our own backyard, really learn from the customers around the area, be able to meet people face-to-face, -face, talk about the cloud, because this is a huge mind transformation uh, in the industry into your organization. What does it mean to be in the cloud? So we thought, why don't let's do this face-to-face. -face. This isn't a, a telephone sale. This is a face-to-face -face sale, OK? So that was the first one, just recognizing the need of change. Number two, cast the vision for why change is needed. Why is that important? Well, if you don't cast the vision and explain the why, how do you know people are following you? I was so worried. I'm like, what about if people just say, Patrick, you lost your mind. We, we only know how to do business one way. What about if they don't believe in it? And I said, in order for me to, to get them to believe, I have to explain the why. And I got to thank my IT department in beginning services. I, you know, salespeople, I pick on myself because I'm a salesperson. Uh, and that's how I brought my career through CCB, through sales. <clears throat> we don't always need to know the why. You give me the marching orders and I go do it, right? Uh, you want me to go sell this, I do that, right? Um, but when you get to the services, they want to know the why. When you get to leadership of running an organization, you want to know the why. 
How's it going to impact the organization? So that's what I needed to do. So I thought the first thing I need to do is give the vision. Now, I love this picture because basically you, have, you know what's in front of you, right? You have the, the binoculars right there. Um, but uh, the best way to call it binoculars. And you can see what's in the distance, right? There's something over there, but it's not focused. You know what that means? It's in within reach. I can see it. It's not like it's just like not there. It's there, but I don't have a clear focus to what it's all about. Well, in order to give you that focus, you have to be able to communicate your vision. You have to be able to get um, the support team around you. You have to be able to dream big. Look at this. We're at Miller Park for the second year. This is our third technology showcase. But at Miller Park, when I was on a plane about, mm, call it five years ago, maybe six years ago, when I'm getting into my leadership opportunity here at CCB, I thought, what could I do to really get the name of CCB out there? And I thought, why not have events at stadiums around the country? That's what I would love to do. And I wrote it down in my back of my book, and I thought, this is how I'm going to do it, right? It's going to be amazing. Well, um, I, again, I wasn't thinking about all the work that goes into creating a, a, a performance, uh, an opportunity, a showcase like this, but I had the right people who helped me do that. They helped me give me the details, and they made it happen. I'm very proud to be part uh, to being here at Miller Park for the second year in a row. And I'm glad you guys are here, too. But you know what? You have to have the vision. You have to be daring to recognize the need for change, but you also have to be able to dream big. And if you can sell the vision behind it, anything's possible. Talking with my VP of marketing, and when she sat down, I think the first time she heard me, and I was suggesting it, she was thinking, again, how much work is going to go into it. But I explained the reason of why this is a great event, why this venue is a great pool for so many reasons, right? Milwaukee, Madison, Chicago, Racine, Kenosha, it's perfect. Um, but I had to give her the vision of why. And then she took the vision that I gave her, she made it so much better, so much better than mine. And she went to vendors and she talked to vendors and said, you want to be part of this. Why? Because there's going to be a great turnout and people are going to have questions and people are going to love you because they're going to hear about your technology offerings and it's going to be inc incorporated in their business and you're going to have all these case studies of why they transform. All of a sudden, the lights are going off. Everyone's excited about the technology showcase CCB. That hasn't even happened yet. And now we are here in our third year. All right. Adapt or die. That's why you have to sell the vision as well. The why. Sometimes you just have to get to that conclusion. If we don't change, who are we going to be down the road? Five years? Ten years? And what happens if things change so drastically that the way we've been doing business doesn't keep us in business. Are we going to really wait till then to make a decision about changing? No. You have to be able to adapt to the times. Now, being a technology company that, that sells technology, it's quite interesting. i got to tell you, uh, there's never one day that's the same. It's always changing underneath our feet. But you know what? I like it. I'm a person, um, I'm, I'm not a daredevil, uh, I'm not flying F-18s, I don't know where John Foley is, but I'm not doing that guy's job, but that's pretty impressive. But I am running a technology company, and I know in order to be valuable to my clients, I have to be able to give the best solutions. And that means changing with the times, not just staying what's comfortable for me, but what is best for my clients. And you have to know, we're not salespeople at CCB, we're advisors. We don't ever force technology on people. We guide and we advise all the reasons and the benefits of what technology can do for your organization. You guys decide if it works for you, okay? But you have to come to the conclusion in your organization, are we going to adapt to the changes around us or are we going to ignore them? If you ignore them, that's just a matter of time before you wake up, at least I felt it was, before I will be out of business. So adapt or die. Number three, build a team that can make change happen. So we talked about recognizing the change, we talked about selling the why behind the change. So how do you, now that now you've got the why, how do you do it? Well, you don't do it by yourself. That's for sure, right? I've never said that my success comes to become from anything that I've done. It comes from the people around me, absolutely. So here's a couple people I'd like to point out. This is my executive team around me. Um, we get along, as you can see, that comfortable, uh, that, that, that wasn't a staged photo, that actually is how we took it, and, uh, and it actually turned out pretty well. Um, but I have my, uh, on the left, um, the one I'm looking at, probably your right, Melly Bernhardt, my VP of Marketing with her arms crossed. You got me next to her. You got Logan McCoy, he's my VP of Services. 
And you have Stacy Magnifer, my VP of Finance, who's not able to be today here today. Um, some medical challenges, but she's doing good. She's recovering, and we're, we miss her. So, um, but strong leaders equals strong foundation. Okay, my executive team is awesome, and I say that because they're awesome because they hold me accountable. They speak up and they tell me the truth, kind of like the Blue Angels. I know if you got a chance to be in the last session. If not, there's another opportunity to hear John a little bit later. Plus, you get a chance to hear him this afternoon. He calls them the Blues. They're all about talking to each other with openness communicating with honesty. That's the same way that I run my, my, my team, my executive team, and my leadership. We speak directly to each other, but with openness, and we listen, but we start. Having strong leaders around you helps me be able to make the right decisions. Um, so that's what I would encourage. The other one is, you can't do it just with executives. You have to have a strong director or management team underneath you. Um, these are some of my directors here um, that you can see around the showcase today. Um, so I would encourage you, um, each, each, each of them have different roles. Some do sales, some do vendor relationships, some do marketing, some do purchasing, some do IT, some do human resources. Um, but having the right people in the right positions is key. And throughout the years, we've had to change that around a little bit. My executive team and my management team is not the same that it's been for the last five years. I've had changes. Um, this is where, unfortunately, sometimes the change doesn't always work out for everyone, right? We've had some people leave us. We've had to ask some people to leave. And that's me being honest and transparent with my friends that have come to my session today. Not everything has worked out perfect, but I can tell you when I've got the right people in the right positions, it always has improved. Successes has always happened when I've been able to get that, that connection point to happen. So I want to encourage you, take some time, evaluate your organization. Do you have the right people in the right positions? Is, you know, it's not just about, well, yeah, but Bob's been in that position for 10 years. <laughs> is Bob the right fit for that position? Maybe Katie, who's growing, who's shown great leadership and great skill sets, maybe Katie needs to be in Bob's position. Now, I'm not asking you to leave here today and fire Bob. I'm not saying that, all right? And if you're Bob, I'm not talking about you, okay? What I'm saying is, look at your people, look at their skill sets, and find out if you have the right people in the right positions. Because if you really want to change, that's where it starts, okay? How do you execute the change? Well, I can tell you all the things not to do, if that helps you. Um, I can tell you a few things that we've done. A um, few things we've done is we looked at our website. <clears throat> what was it like um, when we started changing this new mindset of going to the cloud and being a, a company um, that we had been known for for 20 years of serving and working with nonprofits, which is still our heart? But how do we introduce ourselves to the small, medium enterprise businesses, right? Um, well, we needed to create a new website. Um, our name at the time was CCB Nonprofits. That was our website name, CCB Nonprofits. Now it's CCB Technology. A little scary, changing your website name. <gasps> well, what if nobody finds us, right? Ah, you do things through transition. You make things work. You tell everyone it's coming. Eventually, everyone gets there. You know, It takes a lot of work, so you don't leave anyone behind. But that's one of the things that we did. And I'm very grateful for it. We also wanted our website to tell our story. We had a great story. I'm sure all of you have a great story. Make sure your website tells the story and the history of where you've come from and who you are and where you're going. Um, next thing is we created a, a new store, a new e-commerce store. Um, it was a little late. Um, that wasn't because of us. We had partnered with somebody else. But hey, we'll take full responsibility. It was a little late. Um, but we got it out there now. And we're getting great reviews on it. You know, there's nothing that's ever perfect. So be patient. We're working on it. If you have feedback, send it our way. Um, but we're, we know that everyone in today's time, everyone, I'm sure, raise your hand if you shop on Amazon. Raise your hand. Okay. Um, or if you shop at some time online, I say Amazon because it seems to be very popular right now. Um, we know that that's a big part of doing business. We absolutely believe in doing face-to-face -face business. But we understand some customers want to be able to access their store at any time. They want to be able to track their packages. They want to see their order history. All these things are critical with today's time. So we've had to say, you know what? It wasn't just creating a great website with content of who we are. We actually have to create a website that actually makes people want to stay and want to work with us. Great example. Talked to a, uh, one of my, my employees on Monday. I said, what do you think of the new website? He's like, let me tell you about what the new website. Had a customer on Sunday night surfing online, bought a couple things. I got notified about it. I like the new website. I like the new store. I was like, that's great. That's a good success story for everyone. 
But how do you also change, as I mentioned, from being just a technology supplier? Because that still is important. That's a big part of our business. But how do you come across now, after 20 years as being one, known as one, to a managed solutions provider? A lot of work, a lot of teamwork, a lot of um, events, a lot of networking, a lot of um, just combination of everything coming together. So here's our wheel that we've created. I won't go through it. It's, I know it's a lot to read. Um, we're more than happy to stop at our CCB services booth. Just go past the food, keep walking, and then you'll hit the CCB services team. But they'll, they'll dive deeper into what services is. But you know, that was a huge deal, right? How do we explain to our customers that we're doing services now? And the best way I can say it, because a lot of businesses have been sort of doing services really well for a long time, and, and that's great, but we wanted to add that value to our business. I just had to keep explaining to them. It wasn't that we never wanted to do it. We were just late to our little, ride, little party. We were right a little late, but we're, we're excited to be here now. And we're excited about being able to get the right people in the right positions. Um, that, that has been interesting, and I will say that I've learned a lot of what it means to be doing services. And what does it mean to be a managed services uh, provider for my clients? Actually. I got one of my clients over there. Hey, Lee Barker, how are you doing? Lighthouse. Uh, let's give a round for Lee. He came from Seattle, Washington to be here at the Tech Showcase today. Thank you, Lee. All right. I won't make Lee say anything about <clears throat> how good we are. The Lee. We're doing good for you out in Seattle, aren't we? Um, get a chance to talk to Lee if you have more questions. What's it like being an end user, working with CCB from a managed services provider side? Um, but, you know, it takes a lot of work, but I'm grateful for the opportunities that we've had so far. Um, it's growing. We grew 126% last year in managed services. It's working. It's going really, really well. And I owe all of you a thank you because it usually comes from this. You coming to a showcase, you connecting with one of my engineers, and then out of that, a relationship happens. So thank you for being here today. Hope all of you become clients. All right. Social media. We put a lot of effort into knowing what we do, our services, through social media. How many of you, raise your hand, um, have a marketing department? Raise your hand if you have a marketing department. Okay? Raise your hand if you're the marketing department. All right. All right. That's how CCB, uh, we, we've always had maybe one or two people in marketing. Um, I mean, I'm grateful and, and very appreciative to have, say, that Melody Bernhardt, my VP of marketing, has developed a team of about six people. And each people have their own focus areas. We actually have uh, Nicole, who's focused on our social media. And she's great. She's out there. She's doing constant twist, uh, Twitter twist, uh, the latest, latest social media twist, all right? Spread the news, right? Um, it's on Twitter. It's on Facebook. Um, she's on our website. She's on our blog. She's constantly getting information out to our customers to connect with them. And I think everything has a place. We like to use social media to have contests. If you have your little superhero guy, you'll probably see in the program we're having a contest on that. Um, it's another way to connect. I never, I wanted to be part of social media. I was, when she said, I think we need to have somebody full time, I was like, are you sure? Like full time for social media? She's like, absolutely, Patrick. This is how we can continue to connect with our clients. It was a change that I had to take on. I explained to my dad, he's like, um, how many people are in marketing now? I'm like, six. He's like, you know, I, I, I had one. I said, I know, Dad. I said, we're changing, man. We're doing it. And, and, and he had to trust me as well, which we'll talk about that in, in this whole thing of change. There has to be trust. Trust between you and your employees, between you and your staff, between your customers. Um, and you have to be able to allow that trust to be happening or you're not going to see change happen, right? You have to be able to measure your success. <clears throat> That's huge. We've been doing all these things with social media and a lot of things with marketing, but I want to know if it's working or not. <clears throat> so Melody has invested, and I've invested, the company's invested, in marketing tools to measure how are we getting um, scored? How are people looking at our material? Are they, are they connecting with us as much as we want them to be? It, you can throw anything out there, but how do you know you hit something unless you find a way to measure your results? I guess that's something that was new to me, but that was a big change. But I got to tell you, now that we know, it's drastically changed our success rate because we're actually delivering not on what I think the customers want, but what the customers are showing us that they're interested in. So find a way to measure your marketing and advertising. You will not regret it. Office 365. <clears throat> this has been a huge thing that we've been pushing through Microsoft in the cloud. Why? Because of communication. Because more people are working mobile than they are just coming into the office or having an in-between. 
We call it the hybrid situation, where you're working sometimes in the office, sometimes mobile, sometimes you have things in the cloud, sometimes you have things on on-prem servers. It just depends on what that device is needing to do for you or what that application is. But we find going to the cloud, using the tools like Skype <coughs> to do video conferencing, to do instant messaging, I'm now in meetings. <coughs> Some people might say this is a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. People can instant message me now through Skype to know, hey, Patrick, I know you're in a meeting real quick. If you can respond, great. This is what's going on. It gets me to be able to know what's happening in real time versus me just being stuck in a meeting and maybe even for two hours and I come out and people are like all grabbing at me. I now have a pulse of what's happening in my environment. Doing a conference, a video conferencing call with a, a customer that's in Seattle or maybe in Chicago or Madison or Milwaukee, but we don't want to have time to connect because we're very busy people. Office 365 allows us to do that. Again, it's using technology to bri bridge the gap between you and your clients. That's why we use it internally and why I support it 100%. So, we're trying to move quickly through this. Forgive me, I've got a lot of slides here, but anticipate the difficulties of change. That's the reality. So I talked about all the reasons of why you got the team, but how do you anticipate change being difficult? It just is. Call it life experience. Has anybody had a change, raise your hand, where it's been difficult, where you've had to change something? Maybe it's your the way you eat, maybe it's exercising, maybe it's your business, maybe it's just having kids get older, I don't know. You get older, right? It's hard to change, it can be difficult. Well, I like this slide. Because in this one, this was a fish that decided to have an adventure. He decided to get out of the bowl and go to the next one. I think he's going to make it. He might overshoot it. I don't think he's going to go short. But you know what? Let's just say, let's give him a, a prop to say he makes it. He took a shot. He went for it. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. What he had to do probably to get going and throw himself out um, takes work. It's difficulty. It doesn't mean it's easy. Here's a clip. Um, Thing from one of my movies um, that I'm a big fan of. Anybody a fan of Rocky? Throw them up if you are. All right, good. Don't punch the person next to you. Thank you. Um, Rocky has been something that I watched as a kid. Thank you, Dad, for letting me watch movies like that as a kid. I love it. Um, but it inspired me because he was an underdog. He was a guy that came in. It's, it's a little graphic picture. I apologize. Um, but that's Rocky. That's how he looked most of the time when he was in the ring. But he was an underdog who fought and fought and fought. It wasn't handed to him. He had ups and downs, but he gave everything he had. If you believe in something, fight for it. I say that all the time. In business, I'm in the ring every day of my life. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to fight for my company? Am I going to fight for my beliefs? Or am I going to let it come to me and take me down? It doesn't mean you have to stay on your feet all the time. But if you get knocked down, get back up. All right? Here's Rocky IV. Training in Russia. All right? I put this one here because I loved it, the fact that he had to change his, his tactics. Um, sometimes, if you remember in this movie, uh, Rocky was alone when he trained for a lot of it, right? He had a couple people, but a lot of times he distanced himself. Sometimes in change, you feel like you're alone. Sometimes when you're, when you're doing change, you feel like you're carrying a log on your back, right? How do I get through this? My feet are stuck in snow. I got this huge weight on my back. How do I get through it? It's difficult. It doesn't mean change is just, oh, it's great. It's just every day's great. It's not. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of patience. It's a lot of perseverance. That's the reality of change. Sometimes when we change, we try to change everything all at one time. Guilty as charged. When we started services, I said, we can do every service opportunity there is out there. If a customer has a service opportunity, we say yes. Man, that was such a bad decision on my part. Because I, as a, as a sales guy, and as a person who's used to supplying any product that you wanted, even if we didn't have an established relationship, I could find a way to get an established relationship and get that product to you. I thought services would be exactly the same way. No, it wasn't. And unfortunately, I created a lot of chaos for my company. Because I said yes to everything. And I was making my team say yes to everything. And they came to me one day. And they said, Patrick, <coughs> it's time for us to talk. I'm like, all right, what's going on? Services, is it great? Are we not going to? No, it's not great. We're saying yes to everything, and we can't keep up. And we're not doing things well. We're, we're saying yes, and we're stumbling through things, and we're getting through it. But this was, this was back in 2010 when I started this. 
And they said, Patrick, we need to be able to say no. And I'm like, I don't know, guys. I just don't know. So I, I left the meeting. They left a little discouraged. I left discouraged thinking, well, why can't we do this? Sure we can. <clears throat> and then it took about, I don't know, about a month later, I realized they were dead on correct. And I had to readjust my thinking. And instead of saying we can do everything and grab every phone call and every email and every, every service request that was out there, we had to pace ourselves in order to get through change. But I think in change, I think that's the results that I learned. I think you want to change, at least that's my mindset. Well, I'm going to change. I'm going to change so, I'm going to just change it all. You don't want to change everything. And you don't want to say yes to everything new. You've got to be able to have, which I'll talk later, a balance. So number six is change is critical for the future, though. So we just talked about the challenges of it, the reality of it, but it is critical. So here's a picture from the past. This is how CCB started. We were in the basement of my parents' house back in 1992. That's where we were. <clears throat> we even allowed pets, Dad, in the, in the basement, right? So that's our family dog at the time. And, um, and this is how, this was our Christmas party. That's my dad with his arms behind his head with a Christmas hat on, Santa. This was the original crew. Um, I don't know why the guy's covering his face in the picture. I don't know. Might have been a warning dad when you hired him, but just a heads up. Just kidding. Um, he, he obviously, this is kind of where we were. Then here we are. We moved out. We moved out of the parents' basement, and we ended up going to a, a, a little small operation there. That's me. Uh, I'm standing behind my sister who has the dark brown on. That was me in, I think, high school at the time. Um, but you can see the group changed and grew a little bit. And this is our building today. Started from the basement, went to a couple different places, and now we're building um, where 60 people work, which I'm very proud of. Um, this is a, a second location in Racine, in downtown Racine. If you haven't been to downtown, I encourage you to check it out in the summer. It's wonderful. But this is our businesses right there on Main Street uh, for services. So two locations. Change can be good. Change can be real good. I had to move out of the second, to the second location because services grew so fast. And then this is our company picture last year. Um, really grateful. Um, since then, we've had some people move on. We've also added some people. <clears throat> That's part of change. The one thing about change, I say, it never stops. This is actually at the Kingfish Stadium. If any of you've been to a Kingfish game, um, you should check it out down in Kenosha at Simmons Field. Fantastic. They also have a booth here. I encourage you to stop there and talk to them. But we did a company event there. And this was our company picture at, at their field, okay? So my, my point encouraging me on that is that change happens over time. There's been a lot of change over 25 years, and nothing came overnight. It took steps. So I have to remind myself, looking at those pictures, be patient, Patrick. Change isn't instant. You have to be able to give it time to develop. And five years later, with services now where it is, I'm grateful that down the road, I was able to make that decision to say, let's stop trying to say yes to everything, and let's try to focus on the things we do really well. But you know what? You never know how fast it's going to go. So be prepared. I like this picture because the kid's on a skateboard, but he also has, he has plans for the future. He's got the rocket wings. He's got the helmet. He's dressed for success. He's ready for whatever is coming down at him. I love the picture. That's how we need to be in our businesses. That's how we should be in life. Embrace it. Look for the opportunity. And guess what? Some exciting things might happen, actually, as we go down the road. Number seven, prepare for the unexpected change. Just because you change doesn't mean more changes aren't going to happen. Um, this is what I feel like technology is today. You trying to keep up with it. I'm trying to keep up with it. As we get closer to it, more things keep flying off of it. Every day is a new day for technology to be reborn or something new to be changed. That's how it is. How do you keep up? It's hard. It's really hard. But hopefully you find great people around you that can do that internally with your staff, partnerships possibly through somebody like CCB Technology, um, who, or the vendors that are here today. That's why we brought you in. Somebody asked me, what's the point of the technology show? To get people to connect with other people. That's easy. I want businesses to be able to be improved or grow by talking to the vendors here, by talking to the CCB staff here, talking to each other. It's all about getting people to connect with people. My dad says this and taught this to me. We are in the people business. I don't care what we're doing. We are in the people business. You have to be able to build relationships with people. Technology's tricky. Try to keep up. 
we'd be uh, proud to be able to be uh, advisors for you on that one. Ferris Bueller. I love this guy. Um, this is, a, again, I'm a movie guy. You've already probably figured that out already. But I love Ferris Bueller's uh, approach to life. It moves fast. you got to stop and enjoy it every once in a while or it's going to pass you by, right? Um, it's true. Ferris Bueller took control of his day that day, and he lived it up to the most. I'm not saying go steal somebody's car and uh, take it to a valet and let them enjoy it. What I am saying, though, is I like the attitude approach. Life is short. Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. I have to remind myself that every day. Patrick, you have a blessing to be part of this business. You have a blessing to have your life. Yeah, stress is high, whether it's in your personal life, your business life, but it's a blessing. Enjoy every day. It's a gift. Um, and hopefully have a few fun moments along the way like Mr. Ferris Bueller. All right? Uh, number eight, be courageous and drive change. How do you do that? Well, you're the leader. You have to be courageous. If you're not courageous, how can the people behind you be? Get out of your comfort zone because that's where the magic happens. I love this slide. My, uh, one of my sales directors, Chris Varsic, um, he's across from the CCB booth, I think, working at the Boxlight exhibit, if you stop there. Chris Varsic says, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And when he brought that, he's been new to CCB now for about a year. I was like, Chris, that's so good. I'm like, what does it mean? <laughs> he goes, Patrick. We're going to change the sales culture. We're going to change culture here. We're going to, I mean, we're going to keep taking what works, but we're going to find a way to get people excited about the new things that are happening in technology. But isn't that the truth? All of us find our ways being comfortable that we don't want to change those comfortable ways. I like that. I don't want it changed. But you know what? Growth happens when you change. It really does. Um, so get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Feel free to use that. It's not mine. All right, how did we do that? Well, when I started in the business at CCV, and I was a sales uh, salesperson, I was an account manager that managed accounts, <clears throat> we only really sold software. That was it. That was back in 2001 when I joined the company. And we had been selling licensing. <clears throat> Nobody had really done a whole lot of the hardware. A couple of our account managers had. But most people said, sell software, Patrick, sell software. It's, it's what everyone wants. <clears throat> well, the problem was this. I realized in sales, I wasn't hitting my goals. I wasn't hitting my goals to selling software. <clears throat> and I started noticing these other guys that were selling uh, hardware, they were hitting their goals. So I said, so let me ask you this. How, how do you bring up hardware to your client? It's easy. You're putting the software on something. Can I help you with that? All right, I'm going to try it. It worked. It was great. I was able to have deeper conversations with my clients about hardware and where they were going with their hardware needs. Then came services. And now we're doing corporate. So when I joined the company, again, it was all software. Now we're doing software, hardware, services, corporate, nonprofit. <coughs> Companies changed a lot in 25 years, a lot. But it all took change. It all took courage. You have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone, or you're never going to hit the necessarily the goals you want, right? If you find that you're not getting there, at least I wasn't getting there, I needed to make a change in my strategy. And now I'm grateful that our company is growing um, because of our clients, but because we're offering them more solutions that they feel like they can do more with us on. Number nine, make adjustments to the change. If you're going to make adjustments to the change, you have to be able to build trust with your team. Great example of building trust is right here. You have to be able to let people be able to work without you micromanaging them. That's really important. I've had to learn that. I'm not saying I'm the best at it. I'm learning at it every day. But you have to be able to give people trust in order for them to be able to show you what they can do. I asked for that from my father. He's given it to me. I give it to other people. It's amazing what happens when people feel like you empower them, which is the next slide. Empowerment. <clears throat> let them be a superhero. Let them show you what they can do. Maybe they have skill sets you had no idea that they're capable of. Let them be able to show who they are on the inside. All right? Give them that empowerment. But they won't do it necessarily unless you give it to them. I have an employee. I love him. His name's Steve Shear. Steve Shear, man, if I tell him to do one thing, he will do it. And he does it the right way, and he does it to respect the company and to respect me. Um, if I tell him, hey, Steve, you can do whatever you want, swing away, 
It's amazing what Steve does when he swings away. But he always tries to do it in the right way, in line, in line with my vision and what I want, and be respectful to the company. But I give him that empowerment, and he has been incredible with what his success he's delivered when I give him the freedom and the empowerment. Accountability. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. There's nothing wrong with asking, giving people empowerment, giving them the, the, um, to trust. But you have a right to run your businesses or to be your manager, to ask for accountability. <clears throat> I need to know how we got here. I need to know, uh, I need to confirm that we're on the same page. There's nothing wrong with it if you do it in a respectful way. That's what we do at CCB. We hold each other accountable. I have vice president meetings. We talk openly at that table. What are the challenges we're going through? What are the successes we're going through? How do we help each other? Who's, where, where do we need more support from each other on? Where am I failing, maybe as the president, and I need to be better at? <laughs> Accountability needs to be there for everyone. I encourage you, if you don't have that open door policy with you and your staff, find a way to start it tomorrow. Find a way to bring accountability, but also find a way to bring accountability on your staff, but on yourself. Have somebody else you meet with, a mentor, somebody, a group, that you can talk to people about what you're going through, that they can say, you know, can I make a suggestion on that? Because I tell you, the best ideas I've ever got are not from me. It's from the people around me. Here's Kyle Jolly and Chris Barsick, my two sales directors. At least I like to think of them as the Blues Brothers. Here's a story that I wanted to share about it. Uh, recently, we had a transition where we, we had a, an account manager leave, so we needed to do something with the territory, uh, with the accounts. <clears throat> and so I told the, the two guys, I'm like, talk together, figure out a plan, and then present it to me. So they did. They worked on it all day. They presented it to me, and they said, Patrick, do they know how I like to jump into conversation? I'm like, are you going to talk after each point, or do you want to talk at the very end? I said, I'll wait for the very end. So at the very end, I listened to everything. And they say, so what do you think? I said, I like it. That's it? Yeah. I think you guys have done everything I would do in this, this the transition. You thought about who the account should go to. You thought about the reasons of who should get them and why. I think it's great. I have one suggestion. What's that? I said, for all the seasoned veterans that you're giving these accounts to, don't change their goal. Don't change their goal. Just give them the accounts and say thank you. Thank you for being here. We like it. We don't have to change their goals. Nope. They came up with the plan. I was just another little piece at the very end to give them encouragement. But I love the fact that I was able to, and they said to me, they said later they told me, because I talked to one of the guys afterwards, he said, Patrick, it meant the world for you to trust us. It meant the world that we actually created a plan that you just embraced from the very beginning. And I'm like, it's working. It's working. I need to keep remembering. I need to empower people, trust people, support people. It's amazing what they can do on their own together, right? Be ready for the next change is the 10th the one. Balance, as I mentioned. Sorry. Be ready for the... You have to have balance. You can't do everything overnight. You can't do everything at one time. <clears throat> Walking like on a, a log of this size and probably at the height. I don't know if you can see the building at the very bottom. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to be up high. You don't do that quickly. All right? Um, at least I couldn't, and, then, and I, 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 would, <laughs> I would be crawling on this thing. But my point is, is that you have to have balance if you're going to walk something of this magnitude. Have balance in your life. Have balance in your personal life and your business life. I'm working on that. Hold me accountable for that if you want. I'm trying to find balance in it all. Here's a throwback picture of me in uh, high school uh, with my sister, and then here I am in, in 2015. <laughs> The hair has changed a lot, the face shape has changed a little bit, but I can tell you I'm still the same guy. I'm still the same guy who grew up in the same household and, and, and part of the same company that has the same principles, the same integrity, the same focus, which is taking care of the clients. My point is this, change happens. If you don't think change happens, I think you're fooling yourself. Look at the, the pictures, I've changed a lot. I don't think I've changed a lot, I've changed a lot, all right? But that doesn't mean my heart has changed. Your business can change in maybe how the marketing is done, how the website looks, even the name of the company. <clears throat> but if you have the core values that you have and the mission that you have, that doesn't mean you have to change everything about who you are. All I'm saying is embrace change for what it is, but also don't forget who you are. Okay? Hope is not a strategy. 
Relax, embrace change. Say it again. Hope is not a strategy. Relax and embrace change. A new company, a new generation. That's what we say at CCB. Maybe that's the new one that you're going to take on for yourself when you leave today. Let's connect. You can find me on LinkedIn. Here's my email address, patrick.booth at CCB Technology. There's my direct phone number. Um, you can find me throughout the showcase. But I just want to say thank you for your time. Hopefully there was one or two things out of this whole presentation you can leave today with. Thank you so much.